Thanks, Carrie, and thanks, Larry, for doing this. First question is for Carrie. Carrie, I know you guys only got in three spring practices, but who are some defensive backs who haven't played a lot so far at Ohio State but will likely have bigger roles for you guys this year? I think there's a lot of them that are going to have bigger roles, right? I mean, you, you, you've lost three starters. So uh, we would have every expectation that uh, uh, every one of those kids that were competing uh, at the front end of spring, and you know, Seven Banks and Cam Brown and Marcus Hooker and Josh Proctor and Marcus Williamson and Tyreek Johnson are all going to have bigger roles, uh, have every expectation of, of getting a lot of guys on the field. I think it's a talented group of players, just inexperienced. And so uh, I would expect that a lot of those guys are going to play and compete in the fall and, and, and get ready to go and, and uh, play a lot of them during the games. Thank you. And next question is for Larry. Same kind of question, Coach. Just who are some defensive linemen who haven't played a lot for the Buckeyes so far that, that you're going to be counting on this year? I think the inside guys are the biggest key, like the you know, Hassel Garrett, Tommy Togiai, Jerron Benson, Jerron Cage, uh, and Swan Jackson. Those are the guys on the inside I have to really step up. And as we were going through the three days of practice, I thought those guys were on the right track to be able to contribute in the fall. And, of course, our end is going to always have to be a factor – uh, and what we do, you know, it'd be great to have Jonathan Cooper back, and along with Zach, Tariq, uh, JB, Baptiste, and then Tyler Friday, um, Tariq Smith. Those guys will be a factor going in the fall. Thanks, guys. Great. Next up, Austin Ward from Letterman Row with Dan Hope on deck. Austin. Uh, hey, this question's for Kerry. Uh, thanks for your time, first of all. Um, when sure. you looked at Seven Banks for that you know, first day or first couple of days that you got in March, Kerry. I'm sure he looked a lot different to you than the kid you recruited. What did you think when you saw him out there compared to, you know, what he looked like as a recruit for you? Well, I'll be honest with you, Austin. When I recruited him, I thought he was exactly the prototype of what we look for in a corner. And uh, I, I thought he was an explosive player, uh, long, uh, fast, with uh, really good ball skills. Um, you know, it's it's weird when you get away from a guy for two years and you come back and they're bigger and stronger and faster, and that's all tribute to Coach Marotti and the, the wonderful things that he does in the weight room. Um, you know, I think I think Seven competed really well in those three days. It's a shame it was only three days, but that 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 is what it is. And uh, I thought, but I thought he competed really well. I'm really excited uh, for him. He's taken uh, great. Uh, pride in what he's doing right now and and I think he's working really hard so I'm looking forward to having a chance to get back with him thanks Kerry and one for Larry uh Larry you touched on the value of having Jonathan Cooper back there for your, your rushman what has it been like when you've been around him or now like talking to him remotely as he it seems like he just keeps having adversity thrown at him but he never stops smiling so what what are you expecting for him how valuable is he to your unit right now you know, one of the things he's real varied his leadership qualities. His leadership is off the charts, and and he's been around some great players. He's seen it. And you know how he works in the room, and, and he's taken a role that you respect the guy at this stage. Just if you have a chance to do, and just really pleased where he's at right now. He's in a good place. He's healthy. Uh, he's strong, and really just chopping at the bit to get going. So I think he's going to be real valuable going to the fall. Not only his position play, but his leadership role uh, for the team and for our unit. Thanks, Larry. Yep. Next, next up, Dan Hope from 11 Warriors with Bill Rabinowitz on deck. Dan? Hey, guys. Thanks for doing this. Question for Kerry. Obviously, coming in as a defensive coordinator for the first time, I'm sure you had a lot of things that you were hoping to install this spring. How do you now have to adjust that process without having those 12 spring practices? Well, I think, first of all, the I didn't have a great hope of, of over installation primarily because uh, you're coming in with a team that had the number one defense in the country last year. And I don't think uh, if it's not broke, you don't fix it. You don't make a lot of changes. And you, you, you go, uh, you use what uh, these guys have been doing, what Larry and Greg and Al and, and Matt have been doing was fantastic. And so we, we don't, we weren't making an overhaul of anything uh, relative to the defense. I do. I think we're going to make some additions and changes and modifications. Absolutely. We got a good chance to get some of that stuff in, which was kind of, uh, exciting. Uh, at the same time, you're, you're not going to be able to have the same experimentation that you normally have in the spring, uh, with, uh, with your installs. And so we'll have to, we'll have to see. I think those are things that are, that are down the road based on 
uh, when we're back and when we're allowed to start working with our guys and all those things that we don't get to decide. Is that something that you're able to do virtually in terms of meeting with guys? Are you able to uh, install certain things or, you know, help guys learn the playbook that way? Yeah, I think it would be foolish to try to uh, teach new concepts and ideas uh, over a computer screen. I think those are, you know, the, the process of, of teaching in the game of football is it, it, so uh, uh, specific to the things that you want to install and how you want to do them. So I think those things are very, very challenging. I think that the main thing is keeping our players safe and healthy and, and making sure that they're taking care of themselves and their families and, and those kind of things. And I think you got to be really careful about trying to do that kind of stuff, Dan. Thanks, Gary. Sure. Next up, Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch with Nathan Baird on deck. Bill? Yeah, Kerry, this is for you. Uh, Dan actually kind of, uh, I'll credit Dan, he asked kind of the question I wanted, but I want to expand on that. What's this been like for you? You're a guy who's going 100 miles an hour anyway, and all of a sudden you can't do what you came here to do. How have you kind of dealt with that? What are you, are you kind of climbing the walls? Describe your, what you're doing these days and how you're handling things. Well, I, I, you know, absolutely climbing the walls. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that I'm not. It's just uh, uh, one of those things that uh, you can't control, but it's not something that's uh, pleasant for me. I, I will tell you this. I, I have been amazed at the quality of uh, the people, first of all, in Columbus, uh, at Ohio State, the leadership from our president and, and from Gene Smith, what what they've provided us has been fantastic, the, the clear guidance about how to handle the situation. Ryan Day is a unique leader. As you guys know, I talked about it when I came back. I've had the opportunity to work with some great leaders in my career. And Ryan Day is another unique leader. And uh, his uh, patience and demeanor and clarity uh, in this time has been remarkable uh, for me. Just the, the, and, and I'm learning from him. I'm watching him, and I'm watching how he's handling these situations. And uh, it, that's been fantastic. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and you just lean on people, you know, and the, the veteran guys, Larry and Greg and those guys, you, you just kind of lean on them. But, I, but personally, sitting in my house, for a month is like uh, I can't even begin to describe it to you. So uh, my poor wife, it's it's, it's awful. Uh, <laughs> I, I went I went and picked up a ping pong table yesterday. I said we got to do something. We got to compete somehow, honey. We got to find something we can do. So we're we're going to go play ping pong. I mean, we, we you know it just is what it is. So, uh, but I'll tell you this: it gives you a lot of time to recruit and uh, watch tape and stuff like that. So that that's been fun. And uh, and uh, that's been productive, I think, and, and exciting. And so we're going to make the most of it. I know that one thing Ryan said: we're going to we're going to make more out of this time uh, than, than anybody else. And I think we've done a good job with that. And Terry, I want to ask you a question, a draft question about Damon Arnett. Um, yeah, I, I know you challenged him when you recruited him. You know, are you a dog kind of thing? And yep. and he was an underachiever for a while. And you you obviously coaching the NFL. From what you've heard of his progress to what maybe you've seen, um, how ready is he for the NFL? What kind, of NFL? what kind of an NFL player can he be? First of all, let me just say this, Bill, because I, I love the way you phrased the question, but I do want to tell you this. What a standard we have at Ohio State that somebody would describe Damon Arnett as an underachiever for a while, as a three-year starter on a really, really good team and a really good defense. That, that, that speaks volumes about the standard that we have at Ohio State. Damon Arnett is going to be a very, very good professional football player. Uh, Damon, it's important to Damon. I think Damon has made uh, tremendous strides I, uh, personally. Uh, I think his work ethic is, has, has climbed off the charts, and he is a tough, competitive player. And uh, he's more savvy and more smart probably than people give him credit for. And uh, – I, I will tell you, I think Damon Arnett is going to be a very, very good pro, and I think he's going to have a very long career because he's got versatility. He's going to be able to play inside, outside. Uh, I, I'm excited to watch him. And don't be surprised how high he gets drafted. That kid's a player. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. 
Next up, Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com with Bill Landis on deck. Nathan? Thanks. Uh, Larry, Teron Vincent was one of the guys that I think a lot of people were excited to see this spring or you're eager to see what he would do, and he was probably also mm-hmm. eager to get back into the mix of things. Just where did you see him at physically as the spring was starting, and how much um, does he miss by not being able to have this spring to get ready for the fall? You know, it's tough. You know, you miss uh, those reps. We can't get those back. But I was really pleased that he re- returned from his rehab, from his from his injury really well. I think our staff did a great job of getting them ready. And just as we were getting going, uh, you started to see some of the things you were recruiting for. So uh, just unfortunate that we ended so early. But, you know, hopefully we'll get back together and get going again. But I'm really looking forward to some big things for him you know, going into the fall. And for Kerry, um, Terry Johnson was someone that uh, has been kind of waiting for his turn to break through. Do you see him as a fit at potentially all three of the cornerback spots, and, and what does he need to show between now and, and, and into the fall to kind of rise up the depth chart? Yeah, I think he, uh, I think he fits more outside than inside. I think that he's got, uh, he had a really good start. His his winner was really productive. Um, he is a very smart player, and uh, I, I am looking forward to him competing his butt off uh, in the fall. And uh, I, I'm excited about. Tyreek, and so I, I think he's going to have every opportunity to prove himself out there on the field, and I'm, I'm looking forward to watching him play. Thanks. Next up, Bill Landis from The Athletic with Spencer Holbrook on deck. Bill? Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, uh, Kerry and Larry, for doing this. Uh, Larry, I'll start with you just to maybe follow up on the question Nathan just asked you about Tehran. Uh, mm-hmm. When he's healthy, uh, what, what are the expectations for a guy like him? You said you were starting to see a little bit of the things that you envisioned when you recruited, like what are those things? And, and ultimately how, how can he help you guys assuming that he is healthy for the season? Hey, one thing Jerron has really done a good job is development skills. You know, we want Jerron to be a great pass rusher, the three tech that you guys know how I feel about the pass rusher, the three tech position. That's the guy is a key to our defense a lot of times. So he has to take on that role. You know, he can play to run well as a very physical player. Uh, he runs about 295. And you really idea of what we're looking for, a guy to play that position. So hopefully, you know, with Haskell and him and, and Antoine Jackson, some guys that can come in and really you know, give him a relief. But I think it'll be a very competitive fall when we get going again. Who's going to be the guy who jumps out? So that's what I'm looking forward to. He has the skill set. Uh, certainly has the mental mental phase of the game. And now just a matter of playing football again. And uh, Kerry, for you, I wanted to ask you a little bit about uh, a guy you helped recruit before you went to the NFL, Pete Werner, um, and, and some of the things he was doing last year in terms of playing a little bit of safety and, and being a pretty versatile guy in the defense. I'm wondering how, how much of that did you envision for him when you were recruiting him, just maybe those skill sets? And then also, as you spring that forward, how that versatility might have, help him as he finishes his career and then ultimately moves on. To- those conversations like with those guys? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question because you're talking about a kids that were high school seniors in December show up in January right, and they, they've got to start taking class and do all those kind of things, and then all of a sudden their world's turned back, back upside down. I was talking to our parents last week about the fact that I remember the hardest thing for me as a parent every with all three of my children was the year they came back home from college, and that first summer, that first uh, time frame where we all had to get back together. And so they're, they're going through that at home. They're going through that. Uh, you know, I, I can only imagine what it would have been like to be locked in my house with my kids in that situation. So that would have been, I think there would have been murders involved. But anyway, they, they so so for Ryan and Court and, and going back home and, and, and uh, having to go through all those adjustments and then try to uh, continue to be, you know, uh, these guys are being forced to be like the NFL players where they're on their own and they're training and they're, and their their diet and their nutrition and their study of film and all those kind of things. So they they we've spent a lot of time together. The good news is those are mature kids, and uh, you know they they want to be great, and so they are working really hard. And uh, and and I'm excited about that. And and I think the good news is that they came and they got a good enough taste of Coach Marotti and Coach Parker and the guys in the strength staff to know what 
what that looks like. And then they also, you know, were on the field with some really good players and, and, and got a good sense of what that's going to be like. So it's still an advantage that they were here, you know, but it's a, it's a bigger challenge, obviously, for them and some of the kids. And, you know, yeah, Sean Wade, this is like, you know, let's go. But it, it, so it is different for them. Good question. When you have uh, the NFL experience that you've gained in the last couple of years, is this kind of just uh, an easier process or easier pill for you to swallow being at home and not being around the guys all the time than it might be for some of the other coaches since since some of these guys haven't been in the NFL and you understand what it's like to, to be at home and to not be around these guys all the time? The, it, the part, what I've told the players, and, and I believe this to be very true, is that this is perfect training for them for their NFL futures. This is what the NFL looks like uh, to them. I've talked with some of my guys, uh, players that are that are in the NFL right now, and this really doesn't phase them at all. Uh, I, I talked with the coaches uh, yesterday. I talked to two of the guys that I was coaching with last year, and they were talking about how really up until now it's been no different. And and they, but now they're really nervous because they've got to start having virtual meetings and those kind of things. that uh, it's a little bit more comfortable just from a standpoint of having been without players. Uh, at the same time, there, there's a reason why I'm back at Ohio State. You know, I, I love the players, and I love the, I love the university, and I love everything. It might be easier because I've done it before. It's, it, this is, you know, not being able to be with the guys every day is really challenging. Thanks, Kerry. Sure. Next up. Rob Aller from the Columbus Dispatch with Patrick Murphy on deck. Rob? Thanks, guys. Hey, both of you are known as A-plus recruiters. And for Kerry first, um, how, much, how much do you use the NFL future when you recruit these kids out of high school? I mean, I assume you do. We know you do. But do you kind of see it as maybe a music professor or an engineer would recruit a kid to, to their future? Well, what I would say is that I'm really not interested in being around anybody that doesn't want to be the absolute best in the world at what they do. And to me, the, the measuring stick for us in this profession is to be chosen by the, at the, the group at the next level as being the best at what you do. That's what a first-round draft pick represents. And I think that you know, that you only want to work with people who have that vision. And so I, I would not choose, frankly, to do a, spend a lot of time recruiting players that don't want to be that, that don't have a vision for being that, don't have the potential for being that. And so I, I don't think we should apologize for that, for trying to find people who want to be uh, the, the, at the top of their game and who are willing to train and work hard to make that happen. It's the, one of the hardest things in the world, right, to be able to say that you're the best in the world at what you do. Well, you know, there's, if, if, you, if you asked Jeff Okuda uh, three or four years ago when we started having those conversations, that's what he wanted to be. And so it, 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 it's, it's great leverage when they get tired and they get sore and they got other things going on. They remind them, hey, this is what you said you wanted to be. You want to be the best in the world at what you do? we got to do this. you got to work. you got to – you got to challenge yourself. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't do it because I think it, I, I guess what I would say is I don't think any of us are doing that. Like this is the carrot, go, go get it. I, I just want to be around the guys who are, have a burning passion to be the best in the world at what they do. And it becomes the result. It, it's the natural byproduct of that rather than, Hey, if you come here, you can be this. I, I, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I'm curious. When you were at Coleraine, taking you back a few years, did you use, did you talk to guys uh, when when recruiters were coming in about NFL future there? Did you try to guide even high school guys to, hey, you might have a better shot at the at the league at this place or that place? Uh, you know, it's funny because I really only coached two guys in my entire career, 24 years at Coleraine High School, that had. Uh, NFL careers of, of really any consequence. And so I would not say that. I would say that my time uh, there was focused on helping those kids be the best people that they could be, that to help us have the best team that we could be, and then obviously to help them find the best place for their future. 
uh, whether that will and, and their future, including obviously great educations. And so, uh, the great thing about turning it back to Ohio State is that while we talk about all those things, we you know we also don't ignore the fact that you're going to get a, a phenomenal education from one of the greatest universities in the world and have a, have a reach uh, that is going to be extraordinary. So when I was a, when I was a high school coach always trying to find the best fit for my guys so that they could be as successful as they could be for a lifetime. And uh, so it wasn't it w- there wasn't nearly the NFL conversation back then. And for Larry, thank you. For Larry, uh, you've done this a long time, Larry, and I assume you have similar thoughts in terms of using the NFL. Uh, Ohio State can get you to where you want to go. But have you seen that evolve back from the early days? Maybe it's just perception, but it seems like, an NFL future has sort of gained steam in recruiting over the last decade or so. Did you have you stayed consistent with that NFL future uh, idea, or is that relatively new? I don't think it's relatively new. I think it's something that kids all want to do. You know what? You know what's a young kid at five years old dreaming to be in the NFL? I think you have to be careful selling that dream because everybody doesn't meet those qualifications to be an NFL player. And, and so me, for me, it's trying to sell them the whole the whole program. I mean, that's the key. You got to sell Ohio State, our head coach Ryan Day, and what we do and how we do it. That's the most important thing. Then from there, really, just selling your brand. You know, this is our brand. This is what we do. This is what we accomplish. And I think kids see that today. You know, and I, I'm reminded of this all the time that you know, talent is a gift. You know, to be elite, you have to choose to be elite. So when you start talking and selling kids on that, you'll know if a kid wants to be great and have an opportunity to play in the NFL. But I think it's just a, everybody has that thought, but, but everybody doesn't reach that goal. So you've got to be kind of careful selling that all the time. I think education is still important, and, and that's why you come to school uh, to get a great degree. And that's what the parents want to hear. I hear mothers say it all the time. If I could care less about the NFL coach, I want him to get a great education. And that, to me, it resonates. That's what hits home to me. And if I can help uh, any kid to reach their goal, and then there's a bonus for me as, as a coach and as a mentor and a role model, I think those things are important other than just selling the NFL. We have a lot to sell here at Ohio State University, and I think it's sell itself because we do have a great program, have a great culture, and we have a great head coach, a great athletic director, a great president. So all those things you have to sell part of being an opportunity to play the NFL. Thank you. Yep. Next up, Patrick Murphy from 24-7 Sports with Doug LaMaurice on deck. Pat? Hey, yeah, thanks for doing this, guys. Uh, my question is for Larry. Um, you got asked about Jonathan Cooper earlier, but I'm curious if you could take us back to last year and what that was like, seeing him go through the injury, struggling to come back, and then ultimately making the decision to shut things down. What were conversations like with him? How did you see him react to that, given he thought he had a senior year to play? I tell you, it was tough because, you know, Coop is a warrior now. I mean, you look in a dictionary and find warrior, you're going to find Coop named beside it. He's, he's a resilient guy. He's got a lot of pride, in, you know, and it was just tough watching him go through that because he had put so much work in to get into this position. Had we gone back to his, in a spring, he had a great spring, had a great preseason, and really felt going into the fall like, boy, he's back where he wants to be, mm-hmm. you know, as a fourth-year player. And then all of a sudden he has his injury that he just can't come back from. And it was just sad watching him. You know, I mean, he, he picked his spirit up every day, but you know he was struggling on the inside to get going again. And he tried to come back probably too early, you know, just because who he is. He's a warrior. And it just didn't go well for him. And so he had to make a tough decision. You know, do I go out now? Do I come back? And I think uh, I give him credit. And I speak volume of his character, kind of man he is, kind of person he is, that he decided that I'm going to come back and do this again, not just for me, but I'm going to do this for my teammates. So what an unselfish guy to be able to give himself back to our team and to our unit. And, and we're looking for great things for Cooper. You're cheering for him. You know, here's a guy you root for all the time because he deserved the best because how much time and effort he put into uh, really making himself a great football player. And could this almost be, I don't, I don't want to sound crass, but almost a blessing in disguise given you guys lose chase, you now have an experienced leader on that defensive line at the edge position. Could, could this work out in his advantage maybe? I, I think very, very well so. I think, in fact, that his leadership skill to young players in the room has been paramount already, you know, what he's doing with our, with our young players. So, yes, no question about it. It's a bonus to have him back. And the minute he said he was coming back, you were talking about the happiest coach in the world because you get a great leader back. You get a guy who's been through the war and who's seen great players, and he gets to share that with the young player. So, and he's doing that right now. And everything that we thought he was going to be, he is now because that's the kind of leader he is. So, like I said before, we're rooting for him to have a great season. Thank you.
Yep. Next up, Doug LaMaurice from Cleveland.com with Joey Kaufman on deck. Doug? Hey, I'll start with uh, Larry. When you think about players like Bosa and Chase Young and what they were like after their freshman season going into their sophomore years, where does Zach mm-hmm. Harrison fit into something like that? What did you see from Zach in, in year one? And <laughs> where do you think he fits on the progression of potentially – great defensive ends that you've coached? Well, I think he's one of, you know, three guys I think have a chance to really grow. You know, not only is Zach, you know, we're talking Tariq Smith, you know, Tyler Fried and, and, and J.D., you know, Javante. I think they all have a chance to be really special players. The neat thing about Zach that he came in in January, which I think really helped him, to be honest with you, is some guys you like to come in later. Zach came in early, and I think it helped him to adjust to college football. And Nick did a great job in the weight room getting him ready and preparing him. And we really know what to expect when you walk in, and you saw a guy that had really incredible work ethics. And when you see that, you know a guy has a chance. And he got Chase in front of him, you know, as a role model, and to see how he's supposed to do it and be professional on the field. I think that helped him. So I think the sky's the limit for Zach. And the key is, you know, you have to keep growing. You have to keep moving forward. And so I'm looking forward to what happened in his sophomore year. But uh, there's some guys around him that's going to really help him. And you know how I feel about that. It's just not one guy. It's, it's two or three guys that has to be, have great years for a guy to have a great season. And, and that's, that's always been the case here. And so not only Zach, but other guys, I think, you know, the Tariqs and the Tyler Friday and Javon Tate Baptiste really have a chance to help that transition for him, make it easy. And, uh, Carrie, for you, when you got here, what did, what were your priorities in recruiting for the secondary? How do you feel about how you guys have gone about attacking that? And specifically, it, you know, in a world where you guys are playing one deep safety and three corners on the field most of the time now, how has that affected recruiting? Obviously, I know you can't get into specific names, but just how do you feel about how things have gone for you guys in secondary recruiting? Uh I would I, I would say fantastic is how I feel. I would say that the keys for us and in, in the kinds of players that we're looking for are found first and foremost in how they fit into the culture of the program. And I don't want to undersell that at all. Uh, I think this and this is true at every position. Uh, just the, finding the right kid uh, is important. Uh, not just physical talents or skills or abilities because of, of what is going to be required of them here. Uh, so I think that those things are important, Doug. Uh, I think that from a, from a body type and, a, and a, um, uh, you know, what you're looking for really across the board, it's five positions in the back end. You're looking for guys that, can, that are long, that can run, that, will, that are not afraid uh, to tackle and be physical, that can cover – uh, in both man and zone concepts. I mean, you're looking for complete players, but I think the key word for me was probably be versatility. We're looking for some guys that can play uh, at multiple spots, and uh, I think that that's really important because I think that gives you a lot of opportunity to do things and play more guys and play them in different situations. I think the game's becoming a little bit more situational as it goes, and so we want to make sure that we have guys that are – that are versatile, uh, fast, athletic, but most importantly, that they fit the culture of the program, and uh, that that's kind of where the recruiting starts. And and uh, I think, it, but like I said, I think it Ohio State. You, you, if you're going to recruit to Ohio State, you you you, you got a great product, and uh, and it's it's really easy to communicate that with people. Next up on the call, Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch with. Tim May on deck. Joey? Hey, this could be a question for, for the, either of you guys, um, but um, this time of year, what kind of stuff can you do with your position group as far as building, like, camaraderie or chemistry um, when you guys do meetings? Have you done anything like that? I'll let Larry answer that because I think he's one of the best in the world at it. I, I think that, you know, there's just a couple of things that we do. First, the Zoom meeting is, you know, is really awesome for us because we – try to stay in the guys' line of NCAA and the Big Ten that allows what we do. I think you have to do more than just, you know, talk football. You know, we try to do motivation videos, stuff that really makes sense to our players to touch their hearts. Uh, and, and then there's really a lot of interaction between our players and exactly and there's conversation piece about, you know, leadership, our culture. And those things play a part in what we do also. But there's a lot of motivation things that we try to do with our players just to trigger their mind. 
uh, you know, we did a piece the other day of just on uh, um, Kobe Bryant. Um, and there's this thing about winning and, and just walking through that, what it really means to be a winner. And so those are the kind of things we're doing. Our players are really engaged. They love talking about those things and then watching video about leadership and motivational things. I think that's what makes a difference to our players that you're not only just talking football, you're feeding their soul, as I call it, and give them an ample opportunity to grow as young men. And you have to continue to do that uh, because you only can talk so much football during this period. Uh, but I think those are the things that we're doing, those things I try to do with my players. And, and then, like I said before, it's just been great dialogue between my players, open conversation. Our leaders are leading groups. And, and I think that's the most important thing is how we stay ahead of it. Can you can you tell us a little more about, like, the motivational videos and stuff? Like, is it most of oh, or know, other we, stuff we, resonated with them? Yeah, we, we, have a, we have a great video guy in, in, in the house, Zach. He does a great job. So we put some things together, talk about brotherhood. We talk about leadership videos that we put together for our players to watch and, and just, just things that we can find on the Internet. It talks about different things that, that really relates to us. And so there's a lot about brotherhood. There's a lot about unity, playing together, uh, you know, perseverance. And the typical stuff that you see that you need to talk about in football, getting a message from a different person. And that's always good. I think it's always good to share uh, messages to other people across the country who are great motivated speakers so our players get the chance to hear and I'm just talking about just athletes. We talk about the everyday preachers, anything that we can find that relates to what we're doing, I think is important. Thanks. Yep. Great. Okay. And Tim Mays, next on the call from Letterman Row. Tim will be the last uh, questioner for these two gentlemen. So we'll open up the floor uh, for Tim. Uh, you're up, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, uh, fellas, I'm, I'm just wondering for both of you guys, if you could answer this question, what is it like – you know, if you're in the NFL, you get a player, and if he's really damn good, he's there for 5, 10, 15 years maybe. What is it like to get a player, and each of you guys are losing uh, a guy like this, a Chase Young and a Jeffrey Okuda who really just come into their own, and now they're gone. I mean, how, how do you how do you square that, I guess, you know, but, uh, and not have a little bit of a longing of wishing they could have been there one or two more years? I, I think, uh, just speaking for myself, I think when you recruit great players, they end up developing to great people and have a chance to play NFL. You're almost expecting to leave in three years. And so you have the expectation knowing that if he's good enough, he's probably not going to be around, you know, very long. So you better do a great job recruiting and make sure you're ready to go with the next guy. And I think that's what we do really well, that, you know, they're ready to say we lost the Bosa. Like, what are you going to do? Well, we got his brother. Then all of a sudden we lose Nick. What are you going to do? we got Chase Young. And as I stand here yeah. today, there will be another guy that's going to step up and, and take the same role again that is going to move this thing to the next level. So I'm not as much worried about that. I cry about it. But, you know, what are you going to do? They earn the right to be where they're at and get a chance to play in NFL. It's just that now you hope you recruit it well enough that you have the next guy ready to go. So we have the mentality, the next man up. And so that's what we try to preach and teach. I would say, Tim, that we like. I'd like to keep them all forever. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to tell you I wouldn't. They're, they're great players. I think what's really cool is it's just like your family, only our family gets to keep growing. So, you know, Larry's got an extensive reach all the way through the NFL. When I was with the Titans last year, I'm coaching guys that Larry coached in, in uh, different times in his career. It's really kind of cool. So, for me now, uh, the ability to communicate with Denzel and Bradley and, and uh, Eli and Marshawn and Gary on and those guys that are, that are playing uh, in the league. Those, those are, those are like my sons. They're an extension of us. And, and, and so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I've talked with Jeff a bunch uh, uh, the last couple of weeks and Damon about what this is, what to expect this week. And so I'm proud of them. I'm excited for them. And, and I'm, I'm be honest with you, I'm excited for the next group. You know, I'm excited to, that you just get to keep doing it. I think that's probably part of the beauty of it is that you get to keep doing it over and over again and you get to watch, you get to be really proud of them. You get to watch them go out there and, and make their statement in the league and, and, and you just got more guys coming. So that, would I like to keep them all forever? Absolutely. But, but at the same time, man, it's fun to just keep doing it over and over again. Kerry, I've been around Ohio State football for four decades now covering it and stuff and uh, going on four decades in total and, uh, I have never seen recruiting uh, at this level, and I, you know, and you know, you can talk about the quality of the school and the administration and all that kind of stuff. And but there are a lot of pretty good schools out there doing a similar stuff. But what what is it as you've walked back into it now? What what have y'all got going on that you could explain to people about why recruiting is at the level that it is? 
Uh, I, you know, that, and I'm going to tell you now, Tim, that's a great question because, you know, I, I was here with Urban. Urban's a great recruiter, and, uh, and recruiting was, was all-encompassing. Uh, I just think that Ryan has a he has a great feel, and he, and when when players and their families sit down and talk with Ryan a, a, about the program, and 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 he does a wonderful thing called called Circle of Care, and and it really has nothing to do with football, and it has everything to do with their sons, and it has everything to do with their life, and it's real it's a beautiful thing. And I think that you have a staff of guys who work incredibly hard at recruiting. I don't know anybody that works harder at recruiting than, than Larry Johnson. I just don't. And, and he's got a great way, you know, to, to watch him with a family when a defensive lineman comes onto the facility. I, I'll, I'll tell you this, Tim. My first weekend back, I, I ran over to a basketball game. I was only over there for maybe a half an hour, and I'm come running out of the arena because I had to get back to – something at the at the woody and and this car is pulling up and they're this family's getting out of the car and larry johnson is getting out of the back the tailgate now there ain't no seat back there he had the tailgate <laughs> popped open and he's getting out because he was riding with that family over to stay i never seen anything like it you just you get to recruit with a bunch of people that are like that that are that they're having fun uh they love the kids uh they work it they work it really hard and really well um, you know, uh, we're, we're all recruiting, uh, a bunch of us were, were recruiting Sunday night at, at, uh, uh, at, at nine o'clock and, 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 you know, that there's, there's a lot of effort being put into it. There's a lot of thought that's being put into it. Obviously it, it, it's a great product, but I, I am, I have been so excited, uh, to watch, uh, and, and be a part of this. The, the way uh, business is being done, and, and it, is a, uh, it is a fantastic thing. And, and you're right, I really ne- have never seen anything like it. Yeah, Larry, I want to follow up on that. I mean, number one, that I guess getting on that diet you got on a week or a year or so ago helps you get into that back of that car. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I wanted to ask you, what is it that drives you, you personally, in the recruiting realm? I mean, because you have been very effective for a long time doing it, no I didn't mean to use the word long, but you know what I'm talking about. But what is it? What is it that drives you in that regard? Yeah, just passionate about people, you know, and really building relationships and ensuring that you care and you invest in their young men for the rest of his life. I think that's so important. And recruiting, it's not a, you know, it's not used car salesman. You're talking about people's lives. And that's what I try to stay as honest as I can. Not stay by am, honest as I can, and share what I think is my thoughts. But to me, it's really about relationship. You know, it's passion for what you do. And in the, in the ability to invest in young people's lives, to me, that's what drives me every day. I get up in the morning, have an opportunity to you know, have a chance to speak to young people and parents about uh, you know, what we can do for them going future wise, and that's kind of neat. So that's what drives me. Do, do, yeah. Do you sense so that people have a reputation that you have a reputation that you almost have? I mean, when you look at the first round, high first round draft picks that you have developed, uh, helped develop. Let's put it that way. Do you feel like there's almost a a reputation you have to uphold too. I mean, uh, what, what is that sense? Uh, no question. You know, when you build a brand, people want to see that brand. And so every day, you know, I don't, 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 don't think I'm sitting around not preparing for that, you know. And so I'm doing everything I can yeah. to find ways to enhance what we're doing every year. But yeah, no question about it. And when you've done it for so well for such a long time with great people, and you really push yourself as a coach. And, and I try to do that every year to put myself at another level as a coach that, you know, learn something new or, you know, do something different that I have not done before, and that's part of growing as a coach. You know, Coach Meyer always says that, you know, if you're, if you're good at what you do, enhance it. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Every year I try to enhance what I do as a coach to make our players better. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We've got Letterman Live. We've got the practice report. we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. we got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. we got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.